Now, I want to work on this tree specifically for now, and I don't want to keep running over here to do it. So I can take my markers tab, my player start, I can place my player start here. So whenever I test the game, I'm looking good at the tree. Now the player start is unique insofar as it's unique. There can only be one of them. And so my player start from the mountain is now gone. Because as soon as I place that, it moved from there to there. Thusly. Test game. It's my tree. It's already looking a lot nicer. The roots kind of break up the line in the floor, but the grass helps to hide the lines even further. And just looking at that tree, I'm quite happy with that tree. There's more that can be done to it, but for now, for now, that tree is good. So coming back to the editor, you've guessed it, I'm going to do the same thing to all these other trees. Just mess with the roots, mess with the position, orientation, scale. The spread tool has already done so much work for me. Now it's my turn to go in and make it truly unique. I mean, for example, those roots there, I don't know. They don't pop up like that. They have to be supported by something. It's possible to have roots coming up and going down because soil can move, be washed away, and the roots will very rarely shift position. But that root going up into nothing is not natural. I'd have to deal with that. That one, I could probably get away with. No, I couldn't. That's hovering in mid or two. It's like, no, it's not. Here it is. But it's like I said in the first few tutorials, you must get in there with your camera and look at it from every angle. Because you can be darn sure that some players will do exactly the same thing. So, I will make edits to these trees. Okay, let's start with this one. I rotate and bring him a bit more on line with the hillside. Increase his height. Let's get his roots out a bit. There we go. No. Bring him down a bit more, bury some of those roots. Tilting it that way, bring those up. Yep. Mm. Yep, I like that. Okay. Now these guys, twin trees, just make sure they're intersecting. Trees generally don't intersect with each other. They can grow around each other, but never through each other. So let's move him across a bit. Branches not so bad that can be explained away in um, term twisting of branches but never trunks plus this guy's gonna have to take a bit of a, a scale shift to do something about those roots there we go bring off a bit bring to the side a bit hmm now in this case i don't want to change the scale anymore but I do want to expose more of this root. So I'll go to my terrain tool. I'm still on painted texture mode. I don't want to paint textures, I don't want to paint grass. Uh, fine, painting out a bit. Where am I? to select a okay that's stupid of me <coughs> a momentary loss of mind you have to of course select the brush you want to use the grass brush the terrain brush is just as viable as the level brush so let's reduce the um, scope of this modification hold down shift and lower the terrain where that root is that's a bit severe so I'll blend it in like that. There. That's much nicer. We've got a slight thing there. So I'll just give that a bit more height and then smooth it out. Everything else is fine. 
Uh, this tree, I will bring out to the floor. That doesn't really need much. Let's bring in a bit more. Yeah. I like that. Okay, next tree. Well, let's do that one. This guy, I want him growing it. Oh, goodness sake, what's that? <coughs> okay, get rid of him. <sighs> okay, um, this guy, I want him growing at the side of the mountain a bit. So, I'm just going to rotate him slightly. And I want more of those frondy things at the front. So, I'll just... Whoops. <laughs> okay. Be sure you selected the right tree. And then rotate. Oops. There you go. And some more of those at the front. There they are. No, I don't like that. I don't like that yet. I don't like it. Don't like it. Yeah, I want them. I want them sunk in a bit. Mm -hmm. So let's just pitch it a bit. Increase its position slightly. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, I like that now. Okay. Next, this one. Now, this is a classic example of what I like to tell people um, when I'm addressing issues. Game development, or map design, modeling, creation, anything of the creative process, gives you, a, gives you back exactly what you put into it. Now, if you don't put much into something you won't get much back but if you put a lot into something you'll get a lot back and it might seem like a bit of a chore to uproot a dozen trees just to create a bit more of a realistic look and that is of course your choice But it won't look as good if you just spray and pray. But you don't have to spend too long on the roots. Just, just enough to just break up those lines a bit. The human eye is really good at picking up lines. Especially regular ones. You make things irregular... It look a lot nicer because if you consider a game you map the player probably won't spend too long in one place they're running through this um, on the way somewhere else somewhere more interesting and so you might think to yourself why should I spend 10 15 20 minutes making the forest look nice if the player is going to be spend five minutes running through it and never go there again and the reason is quite simply because you want your game to look as good as it can be and in those those five minutes that the player is running through your forest that player notices nothing and i'm sorry to say you've done your job right it's only when there's something wrong people tend to notice and that is the curse of creators the world over if you've done your job right no one will notice because it's what they expected to see it's what should be there it's, 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 it's right and so there's no reason to think oh that's been done correctly that's not how it works so if you do a job like making all your roots behave themselves 
or lining up your buildings properly so they're not weird. If nobody notices, then you win. Um, and you can be comfortable in the knowledge that you've done a good job. See here, I'm just moving the positions ever so slightly because I don't want the roots encroaching on the path too much. I don't want the roots encroaching on the path too much. They're okay to go a little bit because that'll help with the overall ambience. <coughs> ambience. However you'd like to pronounce it. Um, but I don't want big gnarly roots all over where the player's walking. This is just for a uh, um, an effect rather than an obstacle. The player could go rampaging through the trees if he or she wanted to. But more than likely they won't. Unless unless you turn it into a plot element. Maybe bury some treasure here or a rare monster or some some sort of player bait that makes them come out into the forest. And in that regards oops well done here. Oh, I've moved them. You have to be careful when you're selecting your trees. Um well, in that regards you could justify spending all your time making your forest look nice because you want the player to look for something in there um, but nine times out of ten they won't that doesn't matter because you know you've done a good job okay I'll show you something here which might save you a bit of time if you whilst in entity mode click your left mouse button and hold on an area of the screen and drag you'll see objects ping in sort of a red color this is group select now you can't select everything because you're going to have all them trees in the background that you've just done you just want to select these trees at the front here and then let go and now they're all selected notice you can't extract and you can't go into properties and that's because you can't group extract something like this or change the properties those are individual features what you can do is position, rotate, scale, delete, and lock. If we just drag everyone up a little bit, because I've noticed those last few trees just needed moving upwards a bit, we can expose a lot of roots and then go in individually for minor tweaks. There's pluses and minus to that system. The plus, obviously, is you can do more trees at once. The bad part is you risk missing one from that big group up pull and end up with big gnarly roots just hovering in midair being naughty um, but it does save you some time if you, if you pull out the entire trees all in one go and then go in individually but you must spend extra time making sure you've got them all if of course you want to spend that much time making your forest look nice which I would recommend you do. Ah, missed one. Naughty. Right, bring him up. There we go. Now, I think that's all the trees. I'm just going to go and zip around randomly to see if I can spot any abnormalities. I mean, already you can see just from this it looks a lot nicer with um, the roots exposed in all different directions, scales and rotations compared to what it looked like when I first sprayed. I think I've got them all. I don't see any outlying limbs. So, if I put my player start back on top of the mountain and I will test game and have a look what that looks like. I see a little problem over here, potentially. <clears throat> and I see a little problem over there, potentially, but let's address that now.